Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we've seen how to approach a general all RL circuit, resistor and inductor circuit, when we have either an input signal at time equals zero or a switch setting that changes the current in the circuit at time equals zero, what we're trying to do now is find an expression for the current through the inductor as a function of time. So here what we can see is that we have an, a, a current Hat without a resistor going around the 3 ohm resistor and it is closed at time equals zero which means that all the current will bypass the 3 ohm resistor go through the 2 ohm resistor and the inductor and at time equals zero the switch opens up and now the current is forced to go through the 3 ohm resistor therefore changing the current in the circuit so we want to come up with an equation that describes the current in that circuit as a function of time and this was the general equation that we found in the last couple of videos. The approach is to find the current through the inductor at time equals zero, the current through the inductor after a long time has passed, of course we don't have to go all the way to infinity, but at least five time constants, and then we need to find the time constant, which is the inductance divided by the resistance affecting the current through the inductor. So let's go ahead and find these values. First of all, when the switch first opens at that moment, what's going to happen now is that the current is going to flow through all two, both of the resistors, but the current at that moment will be exactly the same as the moment prior to when the switch was open. So we can see then that the current, which will then go through the inductor, and if it's not changing, the inductor basically doesn't offer any resistance to the current. So then we can see that it's simply Ohm's law, the voltage applied divided by this 2 ohm resistor. So this will be 10 volts divided by 2 ohms or 5 amps the moment before the switch opens and the moment after the switch opens then the inductor is going to try to find the change in the current and then finally you can see that after a while the current will reach its final value again when equilibrium is reached you can see that the current inductor will then be unchanged by the action of the inductor because it will reach its final value and then the current through the entire circuit will now be the 10 volts from the source divided by the total resistance of 5 ohms and so now the current is down to 2 amps so the current will change from 5 amps to 2 amps over a period of time typically about 5 time constants the time constant is defined by the inductance divided by the resistance, the inductance being one-third of a Henry, and the resistance of the whole circuit now affecting the current through the inductor will be 5 ohms, so it will be one-fifteenth of a second for the time constant. So 5 of those, or 5 times one fifteen, or about one-third second, is all that it's going to take for the current to reach its final value. So now we come up with the equation right here. So now we can say that the current as a function of time is equal to the current at infinity after five time constants have elapsed, which is two amps, plus the difference between the current in the beginning, which is five amps, minus the current after a long time has passed, which is two amps, multiplied times e to the minus t over tau. Now since tau is 1 15th, 1 over tau will be 15 times t, and of course uh, t will be in terms of seconds, and it's actually 15 over seconds, but we typically don't write that. So simplifying this equation, we get i as a function of time is equal to 2 amps plus 3 amps times e to the minus 15t. Now to see if we did this correctly, what we can do is check using the, the Kirchhoff's voltage uh, law. We can go ahead and add up all the voltages going around the circuit to see what we have. So using the KVL, we have, first we go across the 10 volts, and then we go across the two resistors, so there'll be a voltage drop across those two resistors, so it'll be minus the current to the circuit, which of course is defined there, times the resistance, which would be 2 ohms plus 3 ohms, a total of 5 ohms, and then we come across the inductor, and so the voltage across the inductor will be equal to minus the inductance times the change in the current with respect to time. Remember that there's only a voltage drop across the inductor while the current is changing. Once the current stops changing, there's no longer any voltage drop. And then you come back to where you started, and so that should add up to zero. 
Okay, let's go ahead and now work this out to see if the left side does indeed equal to the right side, and then we know that we have done everything correctly. So we have 10 volts minus the current. Now the current is defined right here, so minus the current, which is two, I'm going to drop off the amps. Well, let's see, I'll just put in the amps. Two plus three amps multiplied times e to the minus 15t. So that's the current times the resistance of five ohms minus the inductance, and the inductance was one third of a Henry. Multiply times the change in the current with respect to time. So that means we have to find the derivative of this with respect to time. So that would be, well, let's, uh, let's continue over here because I ran out of room. So we're going to multiply that times di dt. And here's my current. So the derivative of 2 amps, that's 0. And the derivative of this would be the exponent times this. That would be minus 45 amps because it's minus 15 times 3. And, well, let's see here. Yes, that would be minus 45 amps times e to the minus 15t. Whoop, and the t, of course, should be part of the exponent. There we go. And so now we have L times the i dt. It's too bad I didn't have enough room here. And maybe, you know, I'm going to squeeze it in there anyway so it looks a little bit cleaner. This should be equal to zero. Put a line here so we don't get confused. So, Simplifying this, the left side should equal the right side 0. So we have 10 minus 2 times 5, which is minus 10, and minus 3 times 5, that would be minus 15, e to the minus 15t. And then here we have 1 third, minus 1 third times a minus 45, that would be plus 15 times e to the minus 15t, and that should equal 0. Well, does it? It sure does, because 10 minus 10 is 0, and a minus 15e to the minus 15t plus 15e to the minus 15t also equals 0. So that's 0 equals 0, which means that our solutions for the current were correct, and that's how you solve a simple RL pro uh, problem like that. That's how it's done.